Hi, I'm Adrian Bates. Welcome to my studio uh, in sunny Stroud. Not so sunny today. Um, I've been a member of the Guild for nearly two years now. Um, so getting ready to uh, hopefully move from associate member to full member. Um, and uh, very much enjoyed being in the Guild. It's uh, been a great resource in terms of meeting other makers and uh, really sharing ideas with them. Um, this morning I'm going to show you a little bit of my work and how I make it. Uh, I'm a ceramic artist. Uh, I work with mostly with this kind of sculptural vessel which is what I concentrate on now. Um, so I'm going to take you right through really from a piece of raw clay uh, in incremental steps through to uh, hopefully something akin to the finished piece. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off with just a lump of clay straight out of the bag. Um, I prefer not to use the clay straight from the bag uh, because uh, there, there can be a certain amount of uh, trapped air and what have you still within that. So uh, I'm just going to wedge the clay up a little bit, uh, which is a simple process of uh, twisting and pushing away from me so that I can manipulate the clay into the, a nice even consistency. This is called the uh, ram's head method uh, for obvious reasons. It looks a little bit like a ram's head. I'm just going to cut a little piece off the top of that and form that into a ball. So, uh, I start off uh, with my ball of clay uh, and I'm just going to pinch that into the base. I use this method for all the bases of my vessels. So um, I continue pinching down the sides of that ball of clay, opening it up until I get to this sort of stage. So um, what I would normally do is um, leave that open and unwrapped. I've got a bit of a torn up tea towel, not very attractive but it does the job. Uh, which I'm just going to wrap round the side, uh, sorry, around the top of that vessel so that that keeps the top half, three quarters of an inch from drying out. I've taken a lump of clay, flattened it out so it's about an inch thick um, and about, uh, what is it, about eight, nine inches wide and about four and a half, five inches deep. So just that's really just so that I can feed this through the slab roller, which is what I'm going to show you next. Uh, I'm going to uh, add the slab that I've just produced, uh, and I've smoothed and just slightly tapered the edges of it, and I'm going to add this to the top of the vessel, well not quite on top but it's slightly lapped over the sides because um, because the base of the vessel has been drying it's slightly drier than the rest of it um, and I want to smooth out any difference in the moisture levels between the slightly moister top and the slightly drier bottom so I'm going to and of course I want a really good join between the two pieces um, so I'm just sitting that sort of slightly on the edge of the top of top wall of the vessel. I'm smoothing down over the outside because it's slightly lapped over the outside. Once I've gone all the way around. Uh, and then going to work the inside wall of the base of the vessel up over the slab really so that those two pieces of clay start to move across each other and really consolidate and become one piece of clay. So having added one slab onto this and allowed it to dry a little bit again with the same cloth right around the top to keep the, the top lip of the vessel reasonably moist uh, and allowing this to firm up so it holds its shape. I'm now going to start taking this front 
edge of the vessel in, similar to this finished piece. Um, it's, a, it's a particular part of the process that's quite difficult to manage. gives you the sense of what's beginning to happen here where this this is if you like the widest point of the vessel and it's going to start coming into the neck now so that I and that that curve that it forms will then lead naturally onto the curl that I'm going to put on the top um, which you'll have to see another time When I'm reaching in to smooth the wall of the existing vessel up onto the slab I've just added, uh, my fingers aren't long enough, I've got very short fingers, so I'm going to use the tool which needs to be clean. You must make sure you don't have any dried clay on the end of your tool when you're smoothing the clay off, otherwise the, the soft clay will stick to the dry hard clay on your tool, which is no good. This is what the vessel looks like once it's completed. Uh, you'll see that there's a certain amount of undulations and, a, and thumbiness, if you like, where I've, I've been, been through the building process. I haven't bothered to eliminate those because the next part of the process is for me to sand over this surface with a really coarse sandpaper. Uh, this is a 40 grit sandpaper, so it's really toothy. Um, and that will allow me to smooth off any of these lumps and bumps. This curl has been added onto the vessel that I showed you earlier uh, in exactly the same way as created as a single slab and is joined onto the top of the vessel. Um, it's then sanded and smoothed down. This is unfired so it's really delicate. This is the hardest part of the process really is getting this very very refined. Um, if it's too thick then it doesn't really work as a, as a, as a visual thing for me. It needs to be very fine and delicate. Um, and also, if it's too thick, um, as is shown here, uh, when it's high fired this tends to uncurl slightly simply because the weight here is just slightly too much for this to support. So I have to get the thickness of this just right. In this case, as you can see, it's uh, just a little bit too heavy and it's sagged down slightly. So the reason that I put that surface texture on the, on the finished pot before it's fired is that the particular glaze that I've developed uses that texture to create a sort of leathery or eggshell type finish to the surface of the pot. This obviously is a different shape vessel but the principle is the same. Uh, as I apply the glaze which is sprayed on, uh, the thicker, slightly thicker glaze because fills in those grooves uh, and creates this contrast in the glaze from the grey to the yellow picks up that texture and so although it gives a nice smooth finish it creates a bit of visual interest without interfering with the overall form which is the most important part uh, of the vessels that I make.